Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. So listen, we, we have Eric here for an hour, so I want to get to, um, I've got some prepared questions that I have. Um, that we have here, just so we can get to some very focused stuff for you guys and get this out of here. Um, Eric, if we can go to the first one of those, and then maybe we'll, we'll take some questions from the folks out there as well. Uh, my first question would be, can you give us five easy things that we can all do every day to fight for the Second Amendment? Uh, well, absolutely. Uh, one, I would say, is use your sphere of influence. You know, Hank, you've got a big reach. Um, here at GOA, you know, I've got a, a, a reach too. And, uh, you know, people may get frustrated because they think, well, how can I compete? You know, I, I see the lies, you know, that the fake news media is spreading. I can't compete with that. But I would say this, there are gonna be people that the viewers can reach that Hank, you and I can't reach. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I think of a, a great example that my daughter uh, wanted to take a friend of hers uh, who, who was anti-gun to the range. And so I, I went with the two of them and we get there to the range and I'm setting up and um, God bless the guy in the next uh, uh, aisle over. He had no idea what was going on and I don't even know what he was shooting. But you know, you've been at the range when you can just mm -hmm. like feel what's what's coming through the wall from from the guy right next to you mm -hmm. and you know and, and and it's loud and uh which I, you know i love it's like hey that's freedom well for her it totally spooked her and she ran out of there mm -hmm. i mean she hadn't even fired a shot yet mm -hmm. my daughter ran after her finally 15 minutes later she comes in by the end she had a fantastic time it was a great experience she's getting you know pictures uh holding the, her favorite gun that, that she shot that day but she told me afterwards, she said, you know, the, the reason I ran out, she said, when I when I was feeling that percussion mm -hmm. fr from the, the aisle next to us, she said, it just brought back all these memories of mass shootings that I've seen in, in the news. Yeah, you know, she's not even a victim herself in any way, shape or form of, you know, quote unquote, gun violence. And yet she was almost reacting like a, like a PTSD victim. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the media has done their job. But I tell you what, just having her there at the range completely changed her outlook on mm -hmm. firearms. And so that that's one thing I would point out to people is you have a sphere of influence that the media and you know even the Hanks and Eric Pratts aren't aren't going to be able to reach. So use that sphere of influence that's actually far more powerful. Yeah. So okay. that would be one mm -hmm. uh, important thing. I think also uh, another thing is adopt. I, I encourage people to adopt a congressman. I mean, most people you know probably aren't too happy with their their congressman. You know, and, and if you're pro-gun, you know, you'd like them to be. Yeah, I want to disown a lot of my congressmen, but exactly. Uh, Mark, uh, we'll go right to the senators, Marco Rubio. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what I encourage people: look, if you have a, a sucky congressman, you know, every time around election time, we we will give out lists. Like, you know, uh, this past year, I went out and I met Lauren Boebert. Um, uh, and we ended up supporting her. I mean, we were so impressed with her. And she beat somebody who was in the state legislature. You know, she wasn't supposed to win. Uh, but, you know, people all over the country were supporting her campaign. That can make a huge difference. So uh, adopt a congressman. At the same time, remember, and this would be another point, that, you know, politics uh, is, is really best done locally. You know, find a candidate that you support, uh, campaign for them, uh, especially in the primaries, you know, donate. Uh, make calls, door knock. You know, Michael Bloomberg spent almost $10 million to try to, feat, to defeat Mark Robinson in North Carolina for lieutenant governor. Mark Robinson is a great man. Love that guy. He's a great friend. But all that money couldn't defeat him. Why? Because there were people like GOA's Jordan Stein, uh, who lives in North Carolina, and he's out there door knocking, dropping literature. That ground game was able to overcome all that Bloomberg money. Yeah. So, you know, when people say politics is local, there's really a reason for that, That that's important. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, just connect with people in your area who believe in gun rights, you know, join uh, with local groups. I, I'm in Virginia, 
I'm a member of the local VCDL that's here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, one thing that's amazing with VCDL, they can put out an email and get tons of people to show up. I mean, our strength is getting people to write or call their, their congressman, but they can get people to show up. And the reason is, is because they're frequently meeting together in person uh, month to month. And so that makes, I mean, that's how we killed uh, the, the semi-auto ban in Virginia last year was getting, you know, 50,000 people to show up. Well, it, it was mostly VCDL get in, for those who don't know, it's the Virginia Citizens Defense League. It's the, yeah. the state. We had Philip Van Cleve on last week. Awesome oh, guy. Oh, fantastic. Okay. So your viewers know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They've done oh, a lot yeah. of work. So, yeah. So I think that's four. Uh, the last one, this may sound a little self-serving, but I would say, you know, join an organization like Gun Owners of America. I mean, honestly, the, the more people we have, the louder voice that we have in Washington, D.C. And no kidding, you know, when the New York Times credited GOA with killing Obama's gun control in 2013, it's because we mobilized our two million members. Uh, when Harry Reid uh, said, you know, blamed us for killing the no fly, no buy uh, bill in 2016, it was the same thing. We mobilized people. Uh, we may not get them to show up personally like, v like a VCDL, uh, but we can make a congressman or senator's life very difficult because we'll have people calling and emailing and mailing. And so mm -hmm. uh, so being a part of an organization like GOA that helps focus the pressure, uh, that, that's really important. OK, very good. Those are all very good, Walter. Um, tell me what you think about that. I'll give the folks out there a so chance. Good. Yeah, if you guys yeah. want to add to that or ask any questions, Walt. Yeah. Oh, I mean... Um... Yeah, just uh, once again, like like Larry, uh, you're saying, um, everybody doesn't have the reach that some people have, but just sometimes by talking to a few people, your friends, I mean, I, I mean, know what's going on, but say, hey, man, you see what they're trying to do? You know, I didn't know that. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, well, here's what's going on. Uh, Marco Rubio wants to do these red flag laws down, you know, these bills. He claims to be from uh, his parents from communist Cuba. What is a red flag law? It's communist I, Cuba. 100%. That whole bill is weird. I mean, yeah. The, so you're talking you know, about the? Uh, is it? The, are you talking about the terrorism bill that Rubio was trying to put yeah, forward or something? Yeah. Okay. All that. All that monkey business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's. I find it ironic they call it red flag. Hmm. Reds. Red. Communist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's got me. You know, it's like. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, I mean, how could you support that kind of stuff? You know, just. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I think it. I, just, I think I it is important. The people. I think Eric made a good point. You know, we may have numbers of people who who look at us, but but folks out there are going to trust the guy right next door. You well, know, your friend. Yeah, you, yeah. You might be able to might be able to reason with your friend a little more than yeah. If they're listening to anybody else, you yeah. know, they don't know really. Just they, don't berate you know. them. You know, we have to. No, no, yeah. <laughs> don't don't talk down to. I mean, I don't like to be talked down to like I'm stupid. You know, we might not agree right. on something, but you don't have. I and it, it sometimes it's hard to do. You know, you, you mm -hmm. have to get to back up a little bit and say, you know, okay, I get it. All right, you know, you can think that way if you like, but mm -hmm. hey, don't be don't be mean. You know, or yeah, you know, because that just scares people off. Or give real life. Um, this is what I try to do. I'm not saying I do. You know, sometimes I get out of control. You know, you get yeah, passionate. Well, I mean, We're and, passionate about and this. It, and if and if it gets a little weird, just hey, let's agree to disagree and have mm -hmm. a nice day. Still be a good I've neighbor. Had, I've had that to think does that a lot. Myself and kind of back out of a conversation yeah. because it's not going to go anywhere. You know? Yeah, I think the best thing is being a good neighbor. Um, that's a very, very effective thing. I think um, Eric had some really good points here. James Miller is asking, "What is the number of GOA's membership? Um, is that something that you guys? Are, I'm, I'm assuming you keep track of." Oh yeah, it's two million plus. Uh, you know, it's funny we were joking about the the or the not our but the Wikipedia page, which mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. uh, just woefully out of date. But mm -hmm. uh, so you won't find good information there right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, we we have over two million members and activists that we have uh, that we mobilize. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Go ahead, Walt. No, I was just saying, uh, um, how. Uh, membership wise i mean do you think and i don't want to bring up say bad words here like uh, nra but a lot of people bailing out of that organization looking for a different a different a different avenue a different uh someone to represent them you know is, uh, yeah um so was that is that whole is that whole controversy help 
in membership, or you think, or is it just a, or is it just you know things have been pretty? You think the whole attitude in the world in the gun, or is it also? I mean, your, your numbers have had to increase, yeah. Yeah, I honestly, I I think the main thing what we were just talking about. I mean, people are the reason they're buying guns at record rates is they're very concerned uh, that they're not going to be able to have the ability to uh, mm -hmm. later be, because of the the Biden administration, and so. Uh, you know, it, it's like you were saying earlier, when, when we're under attack, um, you know, you know it, it's like any insurance, I suppose. You, you know, that you, you think you don't think about getting car insurance when you're, you're 10 years old and you don't have a car and you're not driving. Uh, you know, but once, you know, you turn 16 and it becomes an issue, that, that's when you start thinking about these things. And I, I think it's the same with uh, you know, the Second Amendment and, and groups like Gun Owners of America that are out there fighting to uh, defend it. Mm -hmm. right, right. Yeah. yeah uh, when you turn 16, you realize, oh, oh, that, that's how much it costs? <laughs> yeah. Oh, crap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My uh, mom said, you can have a car, you just gotta buy your own insurance. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I Listen, I see, I, and I think you know, in a weird way, what happened there, Walter was trying to get into the get onto the subject of the NRA. And I know from having many of your folks who've come on here and brought us information, you guys have as a policy that you don't bad talk the other organizations out there. As a matter of fact, I believe that you well, actually try to work with those organizations, right? Oh, sure. I mean, to the extent that uh, we're all going to, uh, in the same direction, mm -hmm. uh, we absolutely will. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's times, I mean, and that's why GOA is here. I mean, there are times where there are differences. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the 90s, we were the lone organization pushing for constitutional carry. Um, it wasn't called constitutional carry back then. It was Vermont style uh, carry because they were the first on the block. Uh, from mm -hmm. the beginning of time, right? Mm -hmm. uh, constitutional that's carry kind, that's state. That's kind of funny, though, Vermont. It, it really is. <laughs> when, when, when you consider how you know Liberal. socialist leaning their uh, representatives are, but anyway, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. they, they probably wouldn't have voted for it today. But you know, they were stuck with it, and and it works well. They're mm -hmm. always one of the safest states in the country. Yeah, I would safely I would safely say that today, uh, GOA is a grassroots organization. Um, I mean, you guys are using most of the money that you're collecting goes right back into fighting uh, what's going on, right? Um, Absolutely. Yeah, and and I think that there's natural. There's probably a bunch of different things happening. I don't know if the, like where those numbers have taken a, a a big climb. I don't know if you're able to see that. Like, was it when everyone started buying uh, guns, for example, sometime last year? You know, have you seen any big spikes like that yeah, that you can correlate to anything? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm typically not the guy who is looking at those numbers, but mm -hmm. I just I know generally um, we've been increasing a lot over the last year, and so you know there may be a lot of factors, but I think uh, you know the, it, it's kind of funny because after Trump got elected, mm -hmm. for a while people thought we had died and gone to heaven. Uh, you know, Republican control of the Congress, yeah. a Republican yeah. in the way. And, and we kept telling people, you know, sometimes the worst gun control we get is under, you know, Truth. Republicans. Yep. Facts. So, uh, and, you know, and, and then we saw rather quickly that uh, those warnings were well uh, founded. And, you know, I mean, we're still fighting uh, the bump stock. Uh, case. I mean, we're still wrangling with that in, in court in the Sixth Circuit. Uh, so, you know, there's leftovers that, that of the past administration that we're still fighting. Yeah. As a matter of fact, um, you know, I, I think that uh, if we didn't really have GOA in there at, in those times, you know, just really scrappy about pushing back and letting people know things, under Republicans, we would have gotten some, you know, we, we did get some things that I'm not happy about, but we could have potentially gotten worse things with uh, Republicans cooperating with that. What well, just think? as an example of that, you know, when I mentioned mm -hmm. the New York Times saying that we stopped gun control in 2013, mm -hmm. that what you just said is exactly the point that they were making, because there was a lot of Republicans that were thinking, oh, universal background checks, that's not that big a deal. And mm -hmm. they were ready to support it. And once they started hearing from our members, 
uh, and this is what the New York Times found in interviewing different senatorial offices. They said, when we heard from GOA members, uh, we realized this was a bad idea. Mm -hmm. And so by keeping the Republicans, we were then able to uh, make sure that they couldn't stop it. Uh, they couldn't stop the filibuster. And we'll probably talk about that later. But I mean, mm -hmm. the filibuster is the main legislative tool that we've used to kill all kinds of gun control over the years. And so, but anyway, yeah, it was, you know, hitting those, uh, you know, using our members, mobilizing them to put heat on, on Republicans. Mm -hmm. it, it stiffened their spine mm -hmm. when they were looking to make a compromise. Yeah, to let them know people were still watching. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.